Hello and welcome to my channel. Go ahead, hit the like, hit the share. This video, I'm going to give you an update to the last video I did because I was sent information that gives a little more context to what was reported. And it also sheds lights to the inconsistencies that we're seeing being reported about R. Kelly. And just to put it out there, for those that have been following me, you might recall me saying last year that I felt like all this was intentional and this was a direct public assassination of R. Kelly. Now, when I said that, it might have sounded good for a lot of people, but I meant exactly what I said. So when I see things like this going on and I see the reaction people have and the excuses that are thrown out here, I just want people to understand that regardless of what is being reported, we already know what is going on. If they want to say that this happened because of this, then we clearly know there's going to be some deception. But at the end of the day, some of these people that are saying they support R. Kelly need to look at this whole picture as it is. Now I'm going to play first before I go to the information from attorney Nicole. I'm going to play the reason why I'm pretty much focused on delivering positive information and constructive content for my platform because the people that are opposing R. Kelly, the people that hate R. Kelly, let me show you how they feel about R. Kelly and how misinformed they are. R. Kelly's bitch ass. Now he's a predator, but because he's famous, people have an attachment to him, man. You know how celebrities and politicians, they have millions who develop a blind allegiance or loyalty to them based upon growing up, listening to their music, seeing them on the big screen, homie, so on and so forth. It's a meaningless bullshit, bro, but it matters oh so much to people. And they'll defend an individual based on it, you know? They'll overlook atrocities based on it, right? R. Kelly's a predator, homie. He was trying to marry 15-year-old children and shit while he was a grown man. He's had sexual relations with multiple females that are young enough to be a daughter. I know a lot of individuals out there are like, well, I, I like the idea of young girls being sexual with me. And yeah, well, fuck you, I mean, you bitch-ass ladies. If you ain't a young fucking man, if you ain't a 20-year-old, 18-year-old, 23-year-old man, and you're 40, 50 years old, you shouldn't be attracted to 18-year-old fucking girls, I mean. They're young enough to be your daughter, fool, and you're attracted to them. Something's missing in you, homie. You haven't mentally or spiritually involved. A lot of individuals ain't gonna speak on this, homie, but you know me, fool. I don't give a fuck, homie. I'm out here, fool. Anybody that got a problem, fool, can slide, homie. And now we're back to what I spoke on last year. And the fact that these people coming against R. Kelly are not mad because he is actually breaking the law. They're mad because of moral decisions. There's a difference. This is my story. We are from the Chatham Dirt. I'm from being put to sleep in the Versace shirts. This is my story. But it costs that at home. This is my story. If you haven't already, make sure you go and check out the other uploads that I did, including R. Kelly's bond hearing. And even go to the video I did about R. Kelly being attacked. Because I also included a video that I did from last year in which I was telling you guys what I saw going on. And it's the same thing that we see repeating itself with so many other artists. We see their public persona, their image being attacked. 
we see it being diminished. We see tragic events occurring and we see other people profiting greatly from it. what MCC put out there was that he was punched a bunch of times and he's fine, no injuries and so forth, right? Is that basically what you remember? Yes. Okay. Well, let me tell you, the story is not quite so easy. I wish it was. And I understand that there are people that in prison, you know what, you, you look the wrong way, you might get beat up. But what what this was, was an individual, a white male who had previously been on a phone call right outside of Robert's uh, cell and was MFing Robert, um, MFing, calling him a N-I-G-G-E-R, um, saying he wants to get him, and so forth. As a result of that, Robert was quick to tell the authorities that he's very concerned for his safety because of what he heard this guy saying. Needless to say, that was about three weeks prior to this incident. Robert, in this particular incident, was sleeping. It was after 10 o'clock, closer to 10.30. He had just gotten off the phone. At 10 o'clock, he had a call. He goes to his room, decides to take a nap. When he sleeps, he puts the covers over his head. It was during the two hours that he and his cell block actually able to be outside and enjoying whatever they can try to enjoy there. And so he decides to go back to his cell. There's another individual, the individual I just told you about, who's got a tattoo on his head that says, like, F the Fed. Um, he's six foot seven. He had gone to psych, which is, you know, like they're a therapist. Um, and instead of being brought back to his cell after that, he walked directly to Robert's cell. He came into Robert's cell. Robert can only explain it as initially he's sleeping and the, the blankets over his head. All of a sudden, he just feels pounding on his head. He's kind of tangled up in the cover trying to get to it and see what's going on. By the time he's able to get out of the covers, he's on the bottom bunk looking up, and this guy, same guy we just talked about, is stomping on his head with his shoe, stomping. And Robert is freaking out. Robert at that point sees, and while he's stomping, by the way, racial slurs left and right, uh, he's pissed and upset about some protesters that Robert had nothing to do with because trust me, if Robert's the one who tried to get the protesters there, the whole prison would know because it's, his phone calls are taped. So he's upset about the MCC putting everyone on lockdown because of people's right to protest. Then everyone in lockdown blames Robert because the MCC tells them all it's because of Robert's protesters. So he's screaming about that, and as he's pummeling his face with his foot, uh, Robert sees him go for a pen that's behind his ear, similar to like how you'd put a cigarette behind your ear. The uh -huh. guy goes to grab the pen, and Robert says, you know, he is scared for his life. He is freaking out. He's trying to figure out what the heck's going on. His celly wasn't in the cell coincidentally, at that very moment. And as soon as the guy actually goes for the pen, that's when they were both mace. Now, Robert tells me that they take them both out of the cell. Robert could barely breathe, he said, from being maced. 
In fact, uh, he could barely talk, he said. Like, couldn't get words out. Meanwhile, the white individual, the attacker, is screaming still the top of his lungs, N-I-G-G-E-R, I'm going to get you, I don't care, I'm in here for murder, just obscenities beyond. And then, well, I should say, what that shows is that guy, maybe he's superhuman, but wasn't affected at all and or not based, and Robert was. Then Bush, they decide to take Robert to medical, as they should. Robert describes medical as 12 or 13 people slash nurses standing around him while a, the doctor, a female doctor there at MCC comes in. He starts explaining to her all of his ailments. And she says, uh, you know, I'm going to x-ray your head. Apparently, they did one x-ray of his head. They told him he was fine. Meanwhile, his entire forehead, you can, I could see, I FaceTime with Robert. His entire forehead is, was swollen. Uh, he had a large um, ball-shaped, uh, you know, a swollen part on the, to the left of his left eyeball. He told me he was seeing black dots. Um, he told me the, the pain in his head was excruciating to even speak or was light. And you know what they did? What they did said, they do? They said, all right, we're taking you to the shoe. Now, for yeah. those of yeah. us... Yeah, please explain yeah. what the shoe is. Yes. Yeah. So for those of us who are not familiar with the shoe, it's called, they call it that it's solitary confinement. It's where prisoners go when they do bad things in prison and they don't know what else to do with them, but they put them there. They do not get the same luxuries or um, commissary or anything when they're in the shoe. It's basically a place to put for punishment. Well, Robert ends up being taken there, even though Robert says, he knew the whole time that they knew what happened because everyone was talking about it as not being Robert's fault. Needless to say, they take Robert to the shoe and they put him in a solitary room with a bright light on him. It's probably the psych room and a bed on the floor. And that was it. Meanwhile, guess where they take the stomper? Oh, a cell right a couple of cells down from him. The entire time Robert in the shoe, the guy is screaming about how he's going to get him, uh, swearing, uh, racial slurs. It, it, it was preposterous. Needless to say, they took, Robert was in the shoe for two nights, and guess what they gave him to help him with his Head because he claimed he had headaches. He felt like his uh, rib was broken. They felt it, said, no, nah, it's not broken, you're fine. And guess what they gave to him for his pain? This incident started around 10, closer to 10.30 in the morning. At 10 p.m., they gave him two Tylenols. He had been experienced, yeah, he had been experienced this, this pain and discomfort and, 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 and real um, unsettling feelings for, I don't know, uh, since that happened Wednesday and when I was speaking to him, it was Friday morning, uh, mid-morning. Um, it's just a shame. And now here's the kicker of the whole thing that I couldn't even believe my ears. So Robert said on Friday morning, they take him out of the shoe and they allow him to go back to his cell. However, well, she's got a new cell. And guess whose cell they put him in? The stomper. Yes. They clear the stomper stuff out, apparently. And they have all Robert's stuff in, like, uh, Robert described it like as his luggage, even though it's not truly luggage. 
in the stompers room and Robert's old roommate is moved into the stompers room with Robert and that's where he is. And if that isn't some mental warfare that seems to be purposely going on there, I don't know what is. So that's what really happened. It's it's not as if some dude got, you know, a little scuffle. Bush, Robert is not a fighter. Robert is very, in fact, he's very light, a light talker, very soft-spoken, and not interested in fighting people. This left his jaw. He literally showed it to me. I don't, he said they told him it wasn't broken, but he literally could move his jaw. It looked as if it was separated from the top, far to the left and far to the right. Can't open his mouth the whole way like he used to. And obviously for purposes of stinging, it's not a good look. Right. So Bush, Now, now yeah. being on his defense team, where do you go yeah. from here with this? Well, he's got a bond, um, an appeal of his bond on Friday in the second, uh, the second district, or excuse me, the second court, uh, court of appeals. And they're going to be arguing about why it's appropriate for him to have a bond pre-trial. And they're going to, when I say they, this is going to, this is a New York federal case. Um, so we've got lawyers there and they are going to argue on his behalf regarding the bond. And they're going to add, obviously, an argument showing by this very fact of what we just ha- saw went on or heard went on that the MCC is not capable of protecting an individual who all humans deserve to be protected. And there are rules and regulations in the prisons for how individuals should should be protected. And he's still a human. And all, you know, and all humans should be protected, obviously. You know, the number one thing I said, Bush, when I heard all this, when I spoke with Rob, put my lawyer hat aside. Humans should not be treated this way. The way Robert's been treated, and trust me, I have a bunch more stories that I could tell, but I'm frankly, I've held back. I don't want anyone to treat Robert worse than he's already been treated. But when it comes down to it, regardless of his charges that are understandably making people uncomfortable, the charges, put that aside for a moment. In the times that we're in, Black Lives Matter, Me Too movement, it's all about people and remembering we're all human. Unfortunately, I think in this particular instance, humanity didn't matter. And Robert deserves to have a fair unbiased trial just like anybody else but under these circumstances it's not going to happen i'm scared for that wow i appreciate you uh taking the time to clear up everything that happened last week with uh r kelly and uh everything that we've heard that happened in the uh the jail and what is going on and updating us that he uh does have a bond hearing coming up at the end of this week. It's true. It's on Friday. Well, you have to keep us updated on what's going on. Thank you. Of course I will, because I've always said and I've always been that person that, you know, believes in in the truth and believes in justice. Um, And unfortunately, neither of those, in my personal belief, are occurring right now. Right. Um, and obviously, as a lawyer, I certainly cannot talk about the facts of the case, but this goes well beyond that. This is not about the facts. It's about reality and humanity. 
got you. Well, I appreciate that. Now, you're doing okay? I am. Um, thank you for asking, Bush. You know, a little isolated, but, you know, for the health of, the, of everybody, I understand. How about you? Uh, even though I moved back in, from between work and home, I, I'm, I'm isolated. I'm in my, my bubble or my okay. small mobile bubble, if you want to call it that. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm hanging in there. Uh, I ain't going to lie to you. Eventually, it, it's a... Uh, it takes a toll on you, though. You know, you you miss your coworkers and you miss your friends and you miss what was normal. You know, being able to go out and you know see people and talk to people and talk to listeners and you know feel comfortable about going out. You know, whether it's COVID or whether it's just um, being able to go out and feel like you're not being looked at or judged by the color of your skin. A hundred percent. Right now is a it's an it's a new time, a new normal, and I can't tell you how compassionate I am with regards to the whole Black Lives Matter situation. Um, and you, like you said, you couple that with COVID and feeling isolated. I know you know this, Bushman. You're not alone. That is a very common thing that I have heard, um, you know, and, and I feel as well being isolated. But, Bushman, you got an amazing audience. Your people love you. <laughs> so hopefully they're all calling in and giving you, you know, some positive vibes. Well, but, I- yeah. I get a lot, I get a lot of me- DM messages, so that yeah. that helps me out. Uh, All right. Yeah. I'm I, I'm reading them and responding back and and responding back to people that comment on uh, my Instagram post or Facebook. Right. So that 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 keeps me engaged. It you yeah, know it's just know. miss missing seeing people face by face to face. Uh, you know, or even when you do see people, you're only seeing them, their eyes. You don't get to see their face anymore. Yeah. You know, it's so crazy. My husband and I always say it's like bizarre because I don't know. I I always, when I would see people, even if I don't know them, there might be a little smile or like a hello, you know. Yeah. You don't know if this person's sticking their tongue out at you or smiling. I mean, uh, it's, no. it's ridiculous. <laughs> or, you know, the fact that you know, normally would just notice the person's face. Yeah. But now you really notice their eyes or it, with the people that have what I call the piercing eyes or the beautiful eyes, you you really notice them. They really pop now because you can't see anything but that. It's so true. I have to do a double take if someone's like, "Hey Nicole," and I'm like, "Wait, who is? Oh, oh, hi." You know, <laughs> it's just not normal. No. But who's to say what's normal now nowadays? <laughs> no, this is this is just normal 2.0, and, and it's just you know new normal is just mutating and and uh. Ever changing, so I don't know if there ever will be a new normal. I think it's just going to constantly keep changing and changing. I agree with you. That's why we got to find out things, figure out things that make us feel loved, feel comfortable, um, feel happy, so that we can really continue every single day to just try and have the best new normal we can. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm going to let you go and get back to work. I'm going to get okay. back over here and, uh, and scream on the air. But thank Great. you for taking the time today to talk to us. Thank you so much for reaching out. I'm always here to tell you the truth. Okay. Call me anytime. Will do. Appreciate okay. you. And I'll, I'll be thank checking you. on you. I appreciate you as well. Thank okay. You. okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.